Hello folks, and today we're going to be doing a little bit more benching. So if you remember from our EK Magnitude review, uh, we had a sort of an early test bench setup, and we did say we were going to be getting a bunch of Noctua fans to put on top, which are going to be going to 3000 RPM. They've since arrived and we've fitted them out, and they are incredibly loud, but they do cool at an insane rate. So that's going to be adding a little bit more headroom to our radiator still. And then on top of that, what we wanted to test with this video is whether or not there's actually going to be more of a difference between the different blocks when we apply a heftier overclock. So one of the things that I did sort of notice with the last uh, testing setup was that our X299 system is running a little bit tame. So we were pushing only 1.1 volts here on this system and a rather casual overclock of four gigahertz. So with that in mind, I think it's quite possible to push this a little bit further. We've got a good cooling setup, uh, plenty of airflow and a decent motherboard. So we should be able to get some much higher values there. And it will be really interesting to see what happens when we pump a heck of a lot more juice into these various blocks, whether or not the results will remain just as close as they did in the last test, or whether or not any differences will come out. And one of the reasons we want to do this is because we're going to be testing blocks in the future, and a few of the ones that I'd like to test out are supposedly full-on overclocking-based blocks, so things like the Optimus signature plates and things like that. And these are all basically designed for extreme clocking. So with that in mind, we also need to have enough heat to be able to see if it makes that much of a difference, even if it's just at a superficial level. So. That's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be testing with a much heavier overclock. We're going to be experimenting to see what we can get stable with what we have here. And it's worth mentioning that we basically won't be able to use this overclock in any other scenario. So in our testing cases where we do the uh, kit tests, uh, there is no way we'd be able to use this in those things because we were hitting TJ Maxx with some of these with even this basic uh, setup. So if you can imagine putting even more juice then it's going to be pretty crazy. Now it's also pretty chilly in here today, so it's only 16 degrees indoors, so that extra little bit of temperature headroom, who knows, maybe it'll do something. But in any case, it should be interesting to test it out, and we're gonna be doing a proper thorough look. Now alongside the EK blocks, we're also gonna be testing a Corsair XC9 to see how that handles the increased load. Uh, so it should be interesting in the future as well to test out some of the different blocks as they come out. So we'd like to try some of the different manufacturers just to see how each one handles it and if there's any differences. So I think we should get into the meat of the testing. Well, that was quite an interesting experience to say the least. So obviously the first thing that we wanted to do was get a higher overclock and more juice going in this system just so we can get some proper heat and test the water blocks. And that's where we found issue number one. Actually getting enough heat from this chip is really, really difficult. So we've got an engineering sample here and it turns out it really hates voltages above about 1.3 volts. And actually 1.3 volts was very difficult to apply above certain multipliers and core frequencies. So we managed to get it to 4.7 once, but we decided to dial it back and sit at 4.6 gigahertz, which is still a heck of a lot higher than where we were. And it did put out a lot more heat. However, we weren't able to fully saturate it. So what I really wanted to do was try and get it to say like a 90, 95 degrees 
on some of the blocks. And then, you know, we're really saturating with all the heat at that point. And then you can probably see exactly where we're going. Now, EKA tested their uh, 7980XC at about 1.4 volts, and we had to dial back all the way down to 1.2, which is a bit disappointing. Um, so that did sort of limit things a little bit. That said, we've still got some interesting results out of it. Hopefully in the future, maybe we can uh, experiment further to get it a little bit more. Uh, because it would be really good to maybe push it further. We even tried doing uh, AVX 512 tests for um, Prime and unfortunately, again, it just didn't like it. So there's a good chance that it being an engineering sample has been the problem there. So either way, we made do and what we did is we applied a number of different tests. We tried reseating and making sure that the blocks were tested numerous times so that we can get some more accurate results. And what we found was, I think, quite interesting. So starting off, we use the Velocity Strike, and that's basically acting as our mid-range sort of benchmark result. And as expected, it performed pretty middle of the road. So we had a max temperature of about 81 degrees uh, with an ambient of 19.5 degrees in the room. So that's a delta of 61.5 degrees. Now that's all right, especially considering the rather impressive overclock and everything going on in here, but I did want to try and push that up. So next up, we tried Corsair's XC9 block. And that retails for sort of in the same kind of region as the Velocity, so it's a pretty close competitor. And funnily enough, we also got fairly similar performance figures. So the maximum from the Corsair was a little bit better at 80 degrees. And that's again rocking the 19.8 ambient this time, so it was a little bit warmer, but still nothing big. So it's 60.2 delta, so it's one degree roughly uh, better than the Velocity but at the same time, that's not a huge deal. It could have been changed by other factors, you know, such as the environmental changes more likely. So either way, they're about the same. But then when we swap to the magnitude, this is where it was interesting because in our previous testing, we were about two to three degrees cooler than the other blocks, which is pretty meaningless. In this one, it dropped quite considerably. So actually we saw a temperature of 75 degrees when we used the default 0.5p plate on the inside. So that's the uh, jet plate that you can swap out. And when we're using the nickel one, we saw 75 degrees, which is uh, again with a 19.6 degree ambient. So that's 55.4 delta. And that is substantially lower. So we managed to drop an entire six to seven degrees uh, from that one. So six degrees on that block. And then we chopped a further degree by changing out the um, jet plate on the inside. So when we swapped it out to the 0.6 P plate, we went all the way to 74 degrees. Now, maybe that one could flip a little bit higher and the other one a bit lower. So we could maybe call that one within margin of error, but it still was lower. And especially if you take into account the ambient, which was a little bit higher again. So that was 19.8 that time. So this time we had a, a delta of 54.2 degrees C. So that means this block was an entire seven degrees cooler, which I think is a pretty interesting finding. So I'd, li I'd like to see how that can change when we can push even more heat through this block, maybe using a different CPU and motherboard in the future. Um, and also I'd like to see how that stacks up against the future blocks. So we'd like to get some from different manufacturers, as I mentioned, uh, to be able to do some more thorough testing and get like a bigger chart going. But even with the current results, I'd say that's a pretty definitive lead. Now, whether or not it's worth the incredible price hike compared with the other blocks is up to you. And I would personally say based on pure performance, no, because you're not really going to get anything extra from those few degrees. It's more of a trophy at this point. If you want the other features of a magnitude, then that's a different matter. And it's more for our review from that. So just looking at our test setup here, it was interesting to see that the so-called higher performing block did actually perform better. And I'd be very interested to see if other similar kind of blocks, so for instance, the Optimus uh, signature line would have similar results to that on this sort of extreme setup as well. Now, one thing before we close that is worth mentioning is that this is still a fairly basic testing setup. So whilst it's good for temperatures, which is you know, quite a realistic thing for your loops, we're not able to test things like your flow rate. We haven't uh, also considered pressure changes and uh, things like that. So what we will be doing in the future, hopefully, is expanding on this test setup and then making it so that we can measure those things as well, because obviously different blocks will perform differently in those different tasks. 
Hopefully you found this little block roundup interesting. As I said, we're going to be adding more to it in the future. And of course, we've got some fantastic project logs right around the corner. So subscribe to the channel just so you don't miss them. Of course, you can also find us over on Discord. You're always around to have a good fun chat over there. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, bills.gg and Twitter. I'll catch you next time, folks.